Hey everyone, I am so excited to be sitting here with you at the very end of August. August felt like the longest month of the year, probably because I want it to be September, which means it's basically fall, which means we're gonna get cooler weather, right? Right. Speaking of cooler weather, Hopefully I am experiencing it as you are watching this because I am currently vacationing in Taos, New Mexico, where fingers crossed as you're watching this, I am at least not in 90 something degree heat, but because of the long weekend, I am gonna push back my normal Sunday upload to Monday morning. So finish watching this video and then I will see you back here Monday morning, 7 a.m. Central for a new video that I am really, really excited for, especially because I need your help with something in a very big way. So make sure you are subscribed so you're here on Monday to help me out with a huge favor. Okay, so let's get to the matter at hand why you are here, August favorites. Let's start with my favorites from Beauty. We'll start with what's on my face and first and foremost, what's on my lips. It's one of the most asked about things that I receive questions on this month. That was an oddly constructed sentence. Anyway, let's talk about this lip gloss. It is from Lawless Beauty and it has a long name, but basically all you need to know is it's Lawless Beauty and the color is glazed. And that's all I have on my lips right now, but it also looks incredible over every single lipstick I've ever layered this over. Couple things you should know, it is a plumping lip gloss without any of that tingling sensation. It just feels cool, sort of like a minty sensation on your lips. So if you've been avoiding the lip plumping glosses because they feel like you're lips are being stung by bees or they're really hot, this doesn't do that. I should also say a little goes a long way. Listen to this, you hear that? It's gloopy and I have made the mistake of being a little overzealous in application in a couple videos, which a few of you pointed out, so I apologize for the gloss strings. I think I did okay today. So when you take it out, it's a nice little curved doe foot applicator, so it's easy to apply, but I would recommend just kind of scraping it off there because like I said, a little goes a long way. You can even dab if you want. But it lasts a really long time for a gloss. It's a thicker gloss and it also layers really well. I love this formulation, but of all the shades I've tried, Glazed is the most outstanding. Next, I wanna talk about a new highlighter that quickly became a favorite and I'm wearing it right here. So I usually avoid highlighter in the summer because nature provides its own highlighter in the form of, let's just say perspiration, but it's been so dry here and my skin is parched and I need a little extra glow. And this is a new release from Laura Mercier and it's their liquid highlighter. I think it's part of their Rose Glow line. It comes in three shades. I am wearing it in the shade Champagne Pink. And I love how, depending on how I angle my face, it doesn't look like I'm wearing any highlighter and then just turn it a little bit and you get that subtle gleam. That's what I love about it. It has a sponge tip top, which seems to be very popular these days. This blends really well on top of foundation, over powders, so you can just put this wherever you want in your makeup routine. Generally, I prefer to put it on with all of my liquids, so I'll do foundation, concealer, any cream bronzer, cream blushes first, and, and put this on along with it and then powder and so forth. But if you want more of a true gleam, you can layer this right on top of your powder as well. And speaking of liquid blush, I feel like I've mentioned this before, but not enough. I wear this every single day. This is the Tarte Man Eater Blush and Glow Cheek Plump, long name here, basically liquid blush. And I prefer the shade pink. I have another shade buff. It's more of a neutral, almost like a bronze blush. I like the pink. Don't be confused, there's buff pink and just pink. Just pink. And I layer this. So every day I do my foundation, concealer, and all that. And then I, before I go on to powder, I do a little bit of cream contour, a little bit of cream bronzer, and add this just at the, ap not even the apples, right at the temples almost. Blend that in with a brush then go on with all the powders, including more powder blush. Why? Well, when it's extremely hot outside and I don't wanna bother with touching up my makeup throughout the day, those little layers help the makeup stand all day long and I never touch up my makeup aside from what's on my lips. And it usually lasts a good 10, 12 hours, even in this heat. So that's why I layer. Do you need all that? No, you do not. But if you are new here, I really love makeup. I love playing with makeup and I do not need an excuse to layer a ton of it on. But if you want a much more natural, toned down look. This easily blends into the skin and gives a nice kind of 
pink glow to the cheeks without looking like, oh my gosh, look at her blush. So really, really like this. The most recent addition to my favorites list is the newest palette from Natasha Denona, the I Need a Nude palette. This is a very neutral, dare I say nude palette, and it is definitely cool toned. Most of the shades are lighter, I would say more subtle. There's some gorgeous formulations. There's a new one, I believe, that is basically a dry to wet looking formula. It's incredible when swatched. I've only just begun to play with this. It is beautiful. If you like more subtle, more neutral, I don't wanna say natural, cause nobody's eyelids are this color, but just a very toned down makeup look. I think you will love this. And the last of my beauty favorites is something I've been using almost every single day, and I've mentioned it before, but it bears mentioning again. It's my everyday foundation. This is the L'Oreal True Match Foundation. I jump around between shade W3 and N3 while I'm doing my fake tanning, and I get asked over and over, what is going on with your skin? Why does your skin look so good? The only thing I've really changed is I've been using this ever since I started fake tanning back in what, May, June? So it must be this. And I love that it is also drugstore. And it's usually around 13 or $14, but it's frequently on sale at uh, Amazon for under 10. So I'll link it down there. It lasts all day. It blends really nicely with my skin. It doesn't, it's not matte, but it's not radiant. It's just the perfect finish, at least for my dry skin. I absolutely love it. And I will figure out what shade I am once I stop fake tanning and who knows when that will be. So gotta give another shout out to the L'Oreal True Match. Okay, let's start talking about clothing. Let me scooch over so I can pop in some pictures for you. So in August, I went and visited Gap for the first time in a long time. And I realized that it's a lot easier to visit Gap online for a few reasons. First of all, there's only one Gap store in all of San Antonio, a city of well over a million, some say 2 million people. So that's interesting. And I've heard from a lot of you that Gap has closed all over in your towns. So definitely, I wouldn't even bother going to look for Gap, just go online there. But there were definitely a few pieces that were standouts and I can assure you I'll be stalking their website continuously now. So the first was a new to me pair of jeans that are one of their top bestsellers. They are the Slim Straight High Waisted Jeans. I found those ran true to size. I wear them in a size four and I just am waiting for the weather to wear them. But they fit really nicely for those of us that still kind of miss the skinny jean. This is a nice happy medium and I think you will love it and it comes in a bunch of washes. The other thing I found at The Gap that I was really excited about, and this was an impulse buy, I did not think I was gonna love this, is this cropped button-up shirt. I love button-up shirts, but I hate all that extra fabric. Do you tuck it? Do you, like, what do you do with all of it? And I love that this cropped version kind of solves that problem for you. And also, you can wear it open, layer it over a tank or a cami. It's a little more versatile. And when I say cropped, we're not talking belly-bearing midriff. We're just talking where it comes a little bit past the top of your jeans, maybe to your natural hip bones. So it's a really wearable option and it's a modern take on a button up. Who thought you know you could do anything new with a button up shirt? Well, the Gap did. Now, speaking of button up shirts, as I am filming this, I do not know if it is in stock or not. And that leads me to a little discussion that we need to have. It's a favorite, whether it's in stock or not. I love it. The time and true sort of rails inspired dupe if you will. I have mine in pink. It also came in orchid, like a lavender, a black, and then maybe a blue as well. And when I did my Walmart fashion video a few weeks ago, there were a lot of comments saying sold out, not in stock. Let me explain something to you. And first, let me start by saying, I feel your frustration. I am a shopper like you. Walmart is not sending me these clothes for free. I have to shop and scour the website and find all the things too. First of all, notice I said website. I'm not going in store to find this stuff. Most of it is not ever carried in the store. And again, leads to a very frustrating experience if you're going into a physical Walmart expecting to find any of this stuff. Sometimes towards the end of the season, you'll see more stuff hit the shelves, but if you want to get the best options, inventory sizing, et cetera, just stick with Walmart online, I promise you. Secondly, Walmart is doing some weird, funky stuff with their website. So my shirt may show up when I check the links, fully stocked in all the sizes and colors where I am on the north side of San Antonio, Texas. Someone in Austin may get a, an entirely different result. It may say sold out or only two colors. And 
Someone in the next zip code even for me can have a completely different result. What Walmart has been doing, and I don't know if they're gonna change it or not, is instead of making it a, like a national database, they're really focusing, I guess maybe they're trying to reduce their carbon footprint, I don't know, but they're trying to reduce their delivery area to very specific stuff. And instead of just saying sold out, they're now saying things like link is broken. So I understand your frustration, it's the same as mine, just be patient and I would ask you to please not comment that things are sold out because they do restock. And if someone's watching that video later and they see a comment that says everything is sold out, it might not be when they're watching and they're gonna miss out on, some, on finding some good stuff. So I get it, I feel your pain, your pain is my pain, but that is what's going on. And it's not just Walmart, it's, you know, it's the state of the world supply and demand, supply chain, all that. Best save for a channel with a different topic than mine. We're gonna just focus on fashion and beauty. Back to the whole point of that time and true rails inspired top is definitely a favorite of mine. And if you manage to score it, I hope you're enjoying it as much as I am. I also have to throw in this free assembly drop waist dress. I didn't realize when I ordered it that it also came in chambray because when I ordered it, they were releasing things piece by piece. And so they weren't even releasing all the color ranges. So I saw it in this plaid, which I bought, love. Now I see it in chambray. I'm like, oh, can I get that too? Probably not. I mean, I'm gonna, I'm gonna restrain myself. <laughs> Let someone else have a crack at it. But I love this flowy drop waist. I know it's not a silhouette for everyone, but I personally love it. I think it's fun. It's a great teacher dress. It's great to wear to church or to synagogue. I wore mine to synagogue. It's just a very versatile, sweet, feminine, little flirty dress. And I like that it's not necessarily skin tight because it's still really hot. So you get the plaid or the chambray for fall and then it's a like a loose swinging kind of dress. So it's a little more conservative and it's not hot to wear. And then my last favorite, it's a favorite that again, I can't wear because it's 150 degrees outside, but it's this cardigan from Dreamers that I found on the Walmart website. And again, when I ordered it, it only came in the white kind of ivory shade, but it now also comes in black. The colors in this, it's so beautiful. It looks like something you would find at like Neiman Marcus or Saks or a high-end boutique of like small crafters. The yarn, is so soft, it doesn't shed. The colors woven throughout are so beautiful. I cannot believe it is from Walmart. If you can still snatch it up, I would recommend grabbing it so that you have it if and when the weather ever turns. Now let's move on to accessory favorites. And first is this pair of earrings that I was inspired to buy by another influencer, Stefana Silber. These are lab created moissanite earrings. They come in two carat size and a variety of options. Halo, no halo, square cut, round, etc. I've been wearing them pretty much nonstop and I love the case that they come in because it looks like something on a TV show. When you open it, there's a little light inside and it shines down on the earrings and makes them sparkle. So it's quite the presentation. So it'd make a really good gift as well. Another accessory find from Amazon that I'm loving this month and I forgot to include in my Amazon fashion haul are these block heeled sandals. Now, like all things Amazon, they come with the straps in all kinds of different faux leather colors, but I love the clear strap and even little details like, can you see there's this metal gold little insert there, just a fun little detail. These are really comfortable. The block heel makes them really easy to walk around in. And for me, these are easily worn for the next few months. So. I'm glad that I found them when I did. Speaking of shoes, I'm really getting into wearing white sneakers. It makes me laugh because years ago I said I would only wear sneakers if I was working out and now I'm wearing them with regular clothes. And there are two sneakers I wanna share with you. One is a new find, so we'll start with this. I'm late to the on-cloud party. Woo, that is a blinding white. Um, I am late to the on-cloud party, but I get it. These are so lightweight. You don't even feel like you have shoes on. I can wear anything from a six and a half to a seven. Usually it's a seven and I got a seven in these. So if you, I wouldn't say size up, but if you have a size range, go to the higher range. I love that there's no like tie to the laces and the color that I got was called, is called undyed. Now, these are more of an athletic sneaker look. If you want more of a walking shoe, everyday clothing outfit shoe. These are old and still available. These are the Madewell sidewalk sneakers. I have no tie shoelaces that I got on Amazon. I'll link below. I love these. These are a classic. They go with everything. And I like that it is a more almondy shape, not quite so dull and rounded. So it doesn't just cut your foot off and make it look shorter and thicker. 
and they're really, really comfortable, and I like the lower profile. So both of these have been favorites in August. Another new accessory that is a favorite are these glasses from Peepers. I have these frames in a couple other colors, but I ordered the clear frames and I'm having a ton of fun with them. I just, they're usually on top of my head. I wear them all the time. I do wear multifocal lenses that correct for near and far sightedness, but as much time as I spend in front of a computer or a phone or a tablet, I need a little extra help, especially as the day goes on, my eyes get tired. So I love that these have the blue light lenses and I got a low magnification just to bump it up a little bit for when my eyes get tired. And I love that they go with everything. And then I have a handbag favorite, and it's not a new handbag, but is back fully stocked. Last time I checked, and I've been carrying it a ton. It's this tote bag from Walmart, and I'm just gonna insert a picture because it's pretty big and it's not gonna fit in the frame. It is very much inspired by a classic bag from Todd's, which usually averages around $1,500 to $2,000. I love how it feels luxury. It's not, it holds everything that I need and it's a really unique shape. And I'm happy to report that it is in the kind of distressed or faded black, a chambray, and then this ivory shade as well. And then let's run through my lifestyle favorites. Okay, I need two hands for this, this pan. This pan is the Hero Pan. It is, I'm gonna put a picture in because it's white, it's reflecting all the light, it's making my camera go nuts, but it is the Hero Pan from the beautiful line at Walmart. I would say if you're familiar with the Caraway line of pans that are very, very expensive, this is identical and it's beautiful. It doesn't just come in this white color, there are I think three or four other shades to choose from. It is, I believe, is this lining called Ceramic, I think? It is completely nonstick. So we got the Hero Pan, which is supposed to do 10 things in one. It also comes with a steamer basket insert. And my husband and I have been enjoying using this pan so much that we went ahead and ordered the whole cookware set on Walmart. And it just arrived actually, and amazing, amazing. I fried eggs with no oil, no but nothing. I added nothing and you know how eggs stick to every skillet you ever cook them in. Just flipped it, no problem, and just washed like a dream, amazing. So if you're looking for a new set of pots or pan and pans or you wanna replace what you already have with something a little more non-toxic and way easier to cook in and clean with, you definitely need to try out the beautiful line. Another new addition that we are really loving is the console table in our entryway. So it's not pretty yet. Like I haven't really fully styled it, so bear with me, there'll be some changes. But I have a doorway that is not centered and so I have a very shallow wall behind it. So I can't have a traditional depth, any kind of entryway table in there. So it's been really an awkward space. And I also have a large plug where our Wi-Fi router booster thing is plugged in, so I need to keep that open. And when I saw this on Amazon, I knew this was exactly what I needed. So it's not real wood, just so you know, it's some sort of pressed material, that's fine. You do have to put it all together. It wasn't difficult at all. And I just love this style. I love the drawers. I can put you know all kinds of things in there. It's a place to throw keys and I just love it. It's, it's so funny how just something, just one simple little change can completely change up a room and I just feel happy every time I walk through the front door. This is another favorite that is not showing up on the camera, so I will insert a picture. It is what we're calling the refined to-do list. It is from a new-to-me stationery company that I've really been enjoying, ordered a few things, and I've been using them up, and I've been a lot more productive in the few weeks that I've had them. So it's great about this to-do list is obviously it has the date at the top, but then it has a little line for what you're grateful for. Just a quick whatever it is. Sometimes it's my morning cup of coffee. Sometimes it's air conditioning. Sometimes it's sunshine. Not lately though. I'd be really grateful for some cloud cover and a good soaking rain. But anyway, it, it has today's top three, like what you really need to get done. And then it has next on the list, a bunch of bullet points. And then even a space for some stuff to keep your heads up on for tomorrow. And also a little thing that says, don't forget, really helps me stay focused. 
I always have a bunch of balls in the air. I know we all do. And writing it out is honest to goodness the only way to keep my sanity. So I'm really glad for this. Another favorite, totally random, this ceramic blade box cutter with the ergonomic handle. So the ceramic blade makes it so it's not gonna chop open my finger, which is kind of amazing. And it's a shallow depth, so as it cuts into the box, it's not gonna destroy anything that's below it, which is nice. And it has locking positions. I'm not worried about it being child-friendly, but um, I just love this. I ordered a couple of them, so I have them strategically placed in the different places I order packages, and it does make opening all of my online orders a lot more fun and efficient. And Michael's thankful because he uses this to break down the millions of boxes that come through our house every day. And then the last favorite is this phone case. Now, this part here that has the ring and this kickstand, this is separate. But this phone case, it's a MagSafe phone case, and that was specific. I needed that so that I could attach this thing to it. I don't love the Snow Leopard print. I wish there were some better options, but what I really like it for and what I'm hoping I'm enjoying it as I'm on vacation, well, in real time you're watching this, is that it has this lanyard, these two clips at the bottom here, and they are removable, so I could swap out this strap to any other kind of strap that I wanted, but we're gonna be doing a lot of bike riding and hiking and floating on a boat on the Snake River. The Snake River? Some river, there's a river. Maybe it's the Rio Grande. And I like that I can just carry this bandolier style, hands-free, but I can still reach for my phone if I wanna take pictures, document, all that stuff. I've even gone so far as walk around the house with this over my shoulder. So I have a hands-free situation and I always have my phone with me. Cause when I'm in the house, I'll be honest, unless I'm going to be in front of the camera, many times I'm still in my pajamas and that doesn't mean I have pockets handy. So it's kind of nice to have these things. I'm gonna be looking for maybe slightly less animal printy options, but I really like this. And like I said, they just this just clips off, but I, I don't take it off. I don't find it to be obtrusive at all. I'm really liking it. So those were my favorites for the month of August. Please let me know in the comments below if any of these stood out to you, if you already purchased them yourself. I would love to know what your favorites were. Don't forget, I will not be here Sunday morning, but I will be here bright and early Monday morning. And like I said, I hate to be that one that leaves you with the teaser, but I'm gonna need some audience participation and some help starting Monday, September 4th. So please come back and watch me then. Hope y'all are doing well. Thanks for hanging out with me and I'll see you Monday. <laughs>